I have to admit that the presentation of the iOS 17 Beta 1 at WWDC 2023 was quite a disappointment. We all thought this will be a very minor update with not a lot of new features. But we are all wrong. We actually have a ton of new features that are coming to iOS 17 and we have just on the first beta and around 250 new features and changes. This update doesn't stop. It keeps bringing new features and changes and we're discovering new features every day which are really amazing. Like this one right here. If you snooze your alarm, you can now have it right here on the live activity. But what you can also do is that you can cancel it directly from there. So if you want to cancel the snooze, you don't need to even unlock your device to do that. Safari got also a lot of updates with iOS 17. You can now view the weather for a city simply by searching the name of the city on the search bar on Safari and then type weather. Or if you have location services turned on, you don't actually need to type the name of the city at all. You just type weather right there and it will show you the weather for your current city. Now you can do the same from the spotlight search as well. Now spotlight search has been amazing on iOS 17. We have a lot of updates and a lot of new features that to make this actually very, very useful. Again, you can search for a weather on a city and you can view it on the spotlight search. Now the good thing about the spotlight search is that you don't even need to unlock your device. You can still do that directly from the lock screen. The spotlight search also has a new view here when you search for an app that you don't currently have installed on your device. It will show like this with that blue outline right there and you will have of course the button right there that allows you to directly install it on your device without having to go to the app store at all. Spotlight search on iOS 17 also allows you to add events to your calendar. So I can type there meeting at 10 p.m. You can see right there it will suggest me to add that to my calendar. So as you can see it says meeting right there. It shows the clock and if I 3D touch on it you can see it will show me all the details. Now from here I will be able to change the time here and of course add here the repeat or maybe invites or the calendar right there. Choose the calendar and choose whether it's all day or not. And you can see right there how cool that is. Again from the spotlight search you can simply go ahead and add any event you want. Now one thing I really like about the spotlight search on iOS 17 is that when you have a link copied to your clipboard it will now show it right here so you can go ahead and directly open that link. Now I believe this was on iOS 16 as well but it wasn't working properly sometimes it would show it most of the time it would not. Now with iOS 17 and the new updated spotlight search it shows every time and it's actually very very useful to have so anytime you have a link copied maybe you forgot about it or something like that, you have it on your clipboard, it will show right there on the spotlight search. On iOS 17 on the lock screen, if you're using shuffle photos, the shuffle photo feature for your wallpaper, where you can change between different photos that you have selected. Now with iOS 17, you will be able to also use the depth effect. Previously on iOS 16, you wouldn't be able to do that. Now the way it works after you have selected your photos, of course, that have the depth effect, you tap on the three dots right there, you get right here the depth effect option. So you can add the depth effect now to your shuffle photos and of course make your lock screen look that much better. Moving on into the settings app, if you go to settings and you go to weather, you would have here on iOS 16 the ability to choose between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Well now with iOS 17 you will be able to choose one of them or mirror system settings. So whatever you use on your iPhone like system wide it will also mirror that on the weather app. There will be also new icons for live photos on the photos app so when you tap on that little arrow right there you can see that we have here a few different options. We have live loop, bounce and longest exposure. All of them have gotten new icons with iOS 17. Also a really cool addition to the photos app whenever you're on a photo that has like a subject you know that you can tap and hold on it and it will highlight that subject. Well with iOS 17 if you swipe up on a photo it will actually do that automatically and you can see how it highlights the subject of that photo which is really really cool. 
iOS 17 also will bring auto symbols to the photos app. So if you have a picture of a car or something like that, of, a, of the interior of a car, you can see why they will show that little icon. You tap on it and it shows what that is. So you can see right here, it says auto symbol. You can tap on it, of course, to view more details. So you can see right there, it shows right that symbol what that is. And it shows you all the explanation about that, which is actually very, very important. Now, Apple has made a lot of changes with the Messages app on iOS 17. One really interesting change that they have made is that if you have an audio message on iOS 17 with the new iMessage app, you can play it even on the lock screen. So if you're playing it and you lock your device, it will continue playing. So as you can see right here, here I have an audio message. I can tap to play it and lock my device and the audio message is still playing on my lock screen. On the fitness app with iOS 17, now you will be able to add filters. When you go to view the history of your workouts, if I tap right there on show more, you can see now we have filters. So we have workouts, but we can change between our different workouts that we do. And it won't show you just any kind of filters. It only shows you the filters from the workouts that you actually do. So you can see all the filters right here for every workout that you have done. You can of course go ahead and switch between them and see which workouts you have done and of course all the details. And another really interesting one here for the Photos app. Now I haven't gotten this to work on my device but I got this screenshot here from iOS beta on Reddit which is really interesting. So when you search for something and you have let's say in this case it has searched for a cat and that cat is on a video it will actually highlight the part of the video where the subject you have searched for is right there. So you can see that's really really cool. It won't just show you the video but it will show you the exact part where the subject you're searching for is on that video. So now that we're done with all those cool new features, let's take a look at some really interesting and important things. First of all, the battery life. So battery life actually in my experience using iOS 17 for almost two weeks now hasn't actually been that bad. Now some days is quite good, some days may be worse, but being that it's a beta one and all these new features is actually not that disappointing. So if we take a look here like yesterday, 100% almost 100% battery use is at 6 hours and 41 minutes on screen. Now the battery health here is at 93% iPhone 14 Pro Max. You can see the other ones are right here. So we got there about 70% battery again almost 6 hours. Here we have around 90 maybe 95% battery 8 hours 16 minutes and then we have here about What's that like? 105% battery, 8 hours, 48 minutes. I know this is not optimal for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but due to the fact that the battery health is at 93% and it's beta one of such a huge update, in my opinion, this is quite solid, even though most iOS 17 beta one users are, ex are experiencing like really bad battery drain. So if you're one of them, please make sure to check out the video right here. I have linked a few different tips and tricks that will help you solve those problems. And now let's talk performance. Now performance on iOS 17 is actually quite good. Even with the all everyday use and all that stuff, it's actually quite solid. Of course, there will be bugs here and there, but it's not that bad at all. Of course, given the fact that it's actually a beta one of a huge update. So here's the score from Geekbench 6 and we got the single core score at 2641 while the multi-core score has increased a lot compared to iOS 16.5 it's at 6805. Let's go back to iOS 16.5 here and this is the score that we got on iOS 16.5. You can see here 300 points increase there on the multi-core score while we also have 100 points increase there on the single core score and in my opinion this beta is actually performing quite good. So what to expect next? Of course beta 2. Now beta 2 should come really soon now most likely tomorrow or on Tuesday. So June 9th, 19th or June 20th will be the dates when Apple will release iOS 17 beta 2 and I'm really excited for this beta. I think it will bring 
Of course, a lot more changes, but hopefully a few big ones as well. We have been expecting a change on the control center that didn't happen with the first beta. Hopefully something will change with beta 2. There will be a lot of exciting stuff, so we can't wait for that. Now, of course, if you want to be informed about that and way more things regarding iOS 17, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys on the next one.